my sisters and brothers in the faith, in our everyday lives, there are four underlying demons that continuously stalk our inner world. They haunt our imaginations and torment our interior spirits. Fear, anger, guilt, and despair. Of these four destructive forces, the one that appears to lurk most consistently at the core of our hearts is fear. There is hardly a day or an hour that goes by when fear does not pass its dark shadow across our anxious brows. Even when we are sleeping, fear can pound us, causing restless sleep and hallucinatory nights. Well, in today's gospel, it is Jairus, the synagogue official, who, fearing the death of his dying daughter, approaches Jesus with a plea. My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come, lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. Jesus challenges Jairus to relinquish his fear. Do not be afraid. Just have faith. Then, before he can attend to Jairus' daughter, Jesus encounters yet another fear-filled person, a woman hemorrhaging for 12 long years. Made whole again by touching Jesus' garment, she approaches Jesus, as Mark points out to us in the Gospel, with fear and trembling to admit that she is the one who indeed touched him. Struck by her candor and humility, Jesus speaks consoling words to her. Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. It is enlightening to notice the manner in which Jesus counteracts the deep upset and fear disturbing the hearts and minds of Jairus and the hemorrhaging woman. Verbally, Jesus clearly encourages them to have faith, to place their full trust in him. He invites them to have confidence in his concern and care for them. In both situations, he emphasizes faith, commending faith as the key to life and the way to becoming free from phobias, dismay, and apprehension. On the other hand, Mark does identify yet another pivotal factor that disperses the fear in the hearts of Jairus and the long-suffering woman. Mark focuses on what we might call the sacrament of touch. In the process of healing and staunching their wounded hearts, steeped in fear and in anxiety. In these two episodes, human touching plays a major role in wavering, waving away the fear tugging at their hearts. In Jairus' desperate, desperate situation, he begs Jesus to please come and lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. When Jesus finally arrives at the daughter's bedside, he reaches out and grips the child's hand and bids her to rise. Immediately, as if some kind of electrical power had passed from Jesus' touch and force of his commanding words, the girl stands up and walks around the room. Mark tells us that those nearby were astounded. In the case of the hemorrhaging woman, the sacrament of touching surfaces in a quite different way. This time it is the woman herself who reaches out and does the touching, aware that if I but touch the clothes, I shall be cured. In the midst of the noise and the crowd, she comes up behind Jesus, reaches out her hand, and touches his cloak. Immediately, her flow of blood dries up. In these two stories, the power of the sacrament of touch cannot be minimized. Analogously, we all recognize the importance of touch in our lives and our own culture. We are told that if a newborn child does not experience the warm, loving touch of another human being, especially his mother, the health of the baby will begin to deteriorate. Should an infant be deprived of all touch, it could be fatal to that baby's life. We all know, too, the power the influence and the meaning of an affirming touch 
a friendly pat on the back, a warm hand clasp, and a passionate tap on the shoulder. Whether in a moment of fellowship or congratulations, or loss and defeat, the touch of another's hand can bring healing and swift solace and joy, a sense of connectedness that we are not alone in our struggles with our fears and our worries. Thus, in our own struggles, as we contend with the threats and concerns of our lives and the world that we live in, we need to seek the reassuring touch and words of Jesus. We need to discover his faithful voice and supportive touch that bolster our sagging and frightened spirits. In our community of faith here this morning, particularly when we gather around the Eucharistic table as we do here, we find the presence of Jesus. In the words of scripture, we often hear Jesus telling us not to be afraid. In our exchange of peace, he dispels our worries as we greet one another in solidarity and peace, as we will do in a few moments. And in the holy bread of life and the sacred cup of salvation, we eat and drink his body and blood that touch the very depths of our soul and spirit. It is therefore in this weekly celebration our weekly gathering that we, you and I, as God's beloved people, we who are God's own family, come to entrust ourselves and our whole lives to him who is teacher and master and Lord. It is in Jesus and through Jesus and with Jesus that we learn to let go of all fears and worries and to let him touch and heal us, to bring us back to the fullness of a vibrant and trusting life able to face life's daunting challenges with his strength and his courage. Touched by his words and supportive presence in our own lives, we in turn are empowered to reach out and touch others in a healing and compassionate way. For the demon of fear no longer controls us. Rather, with faith in Christ and touched by his presence and his words, we are emboldened to stand up and to become men and women for others, companions and disciples of Christ in our world, in touch with the hurting and the needy, the fearful and the anxious bound, healing them with the same care, the same words, the same touch, the same presence Jesus shares with us this morning. 